and welcome to another edition of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And David, today what are we going to be talking about? It's a turntable that you and I have both owned in yes. the past. Actually, there's not too many pieces of Hi-Fi we've both owned. No. <laughs> this could be it. This yeah. actually could be it. <laughs> so, yes, well, I, I've never had a name Nate one, have I, Mike? No. no. So, uh, have you? No. No? Okay. No. Okay. No. Um, I've never had an exposure. Or, or all of them. Yeah, or all of them. <laughs> um, I've never bought one anyway. I've used the uh, the 3010 and the 3510 as a reference. Uh, but uh, this so. piece of kit we have, and it is the... Riga Planner 3. Which is, I think, one of our favourite pieces of hi-fi, isn't it? It is. And yeah. I think the reason why is more than just through sheer nostalgia... Because I think it was it was both of our first proper turntables. Yeah. Um, and it it really kickstarted our our hi-fi enthusiasm. Yeah. Um, because it 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 actually got us you know tangible results. We were all of a sudden we were we were big boys. We were grown up. We had yeah. an amazing turntable, and, and yes. you know we had a we and it was the it was the absolute nerve center of a great sound system. Um, so. I think this is this it, this kind of little mini review is going to be more than that nostalgia, because. Having listened to the latest incarnation, yeah. it really does sound great. It does. Even yeah. now, it's it's got that lovely Riga signature sound, yeah. um, and it's a fabulous turntable. And I think it's, I still think it's one of the best looking turntables around. Yeah, um, I really do. Yeah. It's that kind of really elegant simplicity. Um, it's dead easy to use and set up. Yeah, um, I, I just, it's just, it's really brought it back to me. Yeah, uh, listening to it again, and I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, one of the nicest things I've done in in quite a few quite a, quite a few years is, yeah. is revisit the Riga. Yeah. So, do you feel the same? Yeah. So, I mean, the first thing about it is, and this is a really important thing, is time taken to set up from <laughs> from out of the box compared know. to some others. Yeah, compared to some others, including yes. a number of budget other budget decks. Yes. Uh, yeah. That should know better. How long did it take us? I mean, less than five minutes, wasn't it? Yeah. It wasn't even five. Yeah. Minutes. I mean, we admittedly we have done. We have taken Rigas and uh, set them up out of the box about a million times. Yeah. When we were students and we were moving around from bedsit to bedsit, you know, then yes. then that would be you'd be doing that. You get kicked out of one sort of, you know, um, pit of a of a of a, of a sort, of, um, sort of squat or whatever you were in, and you'd be yeah. packing it up and then moving it and then unpacking it. Yes. So um, yeah. we, we got fairly good at it. But even if you're not good at it and you haven't packed and unpacked a Riga. 15,000 times before so easy <laughs> really um, is. and um, it all goes on really easily the uh, counterweight needs to be pushed on you need to put the platter on um, and basically plug in the um, uh, the power supply and obviously the arm uh, leads into the into the preamp or the, the integrated amp um, and that's pretty Switch much it, it. On. yeah and they, there we go remove the stylus guard set the tracking force but again that's Easy peasy. Yeah, yeah, they make it very simple. Yeah. So within no time at all, you're up and running, you're out of the box. Yeah. Um, it's pretty bulletproof as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know the answer to this. Do they still come with a lifetime guarantee? They always used to come with a yeah. lifetime guarantee. I um, don't know. And what it, the reason why was because, you know, Roy Gandhi would say there's just really nothing to go wrong with it because it's such, it's actually such a simply made yeah. piece of kit. But, you know, sometimes the simple things are the most effective. Um, the one we had really pleased me because it was in white, and my Riga was in white back in the day. Was I your, told you that. Was, I told you that before. <laughs> did you get a really rare limited edition white Riga, Mike, by so any chance? So I was in Westwood and Mason in Oxford, going in there to buy my black Riga for I think one hundred and eighty-eight pounds. Yeah, that sound about right. Yeah, yeah. And um, mid eighties then. And and yeah. I literally I'd, I'd bought it and yeah. they boxed it up. And on demo, they had a white one. Yeah. And they and they said, oh, you can have a white one for the same price if you want. So they had to sort of uh, <laughs> take the other one back, swap it over, and, and I came home with a white one. But Excellent. I was really chuffed with that. Really well, I had, I had a pink one. You did, that's right. <laughs> yeah, what I'll take your white Riga and raise you a pink Riga. <laughs> so, yes, that's right. I'd forgotten that. Yeah. I had forgotten that. So Yeah, and I had a black one before that. So Yes. Um, when I went to the yeah. factory, which was, I guess... Oh my gosh! Probably about 1990. Yeah. Um, then they gave me a limited edition plinth, which I think was in like a turquoise. Right. Um, a little bit like the lin we reviewed recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've still got it in the loft. Wow. It's, it's just the plinth, you know. Yeah. To swap it out, but. Um, oh, that's cool. But it won't. It won't be any good now, will it? Because the plinth's been upgraded. 
since yep. then. Yep. Um, I'd have to buy a 90s Riga probably to do that. But uh, Yeah, well, I mean, you'd have to buy one, you know, from at least sort of a, a recent few years, I think. Yes, um, yeah. Because, I mean, the, the, the interesting thing about the original Planner 3 was it was launched, I think, in 1978, and it had um, the Riga... R two hundred S shaped, yeah, um, and uh, I think that was basically uh, uh, made by Acos, uh, Acos Luster, uh, Japanese sourced arm, wasn't it? Yeah, it probably was. Um, and in the summer of nineteen eighty three, late summer, they changed that to the RB three hundred, didn't they? Which was a stunningly good turnout. I mean, in terms of yeah. value, for, it was about eighty quid or something like that. It was yeah, it was ninety pounds new, so cheap separately. For what you yeah, got. and and. You know, I think I think actually think that that Lynn um, realised that that this was an amazing value for money tone arm, yes. particularly against their sort of basics and basic pluses. Yeah, it was much better than those. Wasn't and it? and sort of started this. And I'm, I I don't know if this is true, but I would suggest they, there's a route. Some somebody started a rumour saying that the Riga RB three hundred wouldn't work on a Lynn. Yeah. So I remember taking the uh, getting an arm board and drilling it. Yeah. And um, putting in the RB three hundred on it and putting it on the Lynn and it sounded phenomenal. <laughs> you know, it wasn't supposed to work. Work, but, yeah. but what was not to like? Yeah. You know, it was a great arm, and it and, and it worked an absolute treat. Yeah. So I replaced my, um, L, might have been an LVV or something yep. like that, even yep. with an RB three hundred. Yeah. Uh, and it was a night and day upgrade. Yeah. In fact, I think at the time that the the um the best arm you could get was the Atoc. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't think it was far behind that. Yeah. To be honest, and the Atoc was about five hundred pounds or something. Yeah. You know, for that yeah. time, um, and and then. You know, you could it cartridge match really easily, as does this one. Yeah. I mean, Riga, you know, supply their own cartridge. Um, I can't remember which one we'd had now. Um, we would have had the RB100. We would have been the RB100. Um, well, I originally, yeah. so I, I uh, the reason I'm going back to why I know that it was August or, or late summer 83, was I went to buy my first Riga at uh, Riga Pana 3 at Westwood Mason. It's my yeah. first proper turntable ever. Um and, uh, you know, I've been working all the holidays, uh, you know, uh, sort of, uh, I think we were in the sixth form or something, weren't yes, we? Yes, yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, they, they told me the price was going up because it was, I think, 150 quid. Um, and it's like, oh, no, why is that? And it, because it had the new arm, which yes. was a, went up to 188 uh, with the new arm. And I had one of the very first Riga Planar 3s with the RB300. And at that time, they were still making the R100 cartridge or, or they were importing it from supex weren't they that's right yeah um, yeah so i had a i had a, a, a very early uh, planar 3 with rb300 and an arm 100 very soon after that they made the rb uh, one rb100 uh, which has followed the kind of same style as the exact moving magnet which we had uh, when we were listening to the new uh, plan plan a three. Yeah, um, so really nice cartridge. Really good. Yeah, isn't it? really really excellent. Yeah, um, so they're Riga's best, Riga's top M mm. Yeah, I think that yeah. um, I think you know there's no two ways about it. This is the best sounding Riga Plan a three. Yeah, so far. Yeah, I think that's that's goes without saying because uh, they have done a few a few tweaks uh, and a few improvements. Yeah. Um, but it still can it still has that original magic. Yeah, it? that original yeah. sound. And we were talking about this earlier. So so it's. It's really easy to listen to. It just seems to make everything sound nice. Yeah, smooth. Um, really smooth. Yeah. Now, you know, you've got to, you get what you pay for. Yeah. And okay, I think there are better turntables out there if you spend more money. Yeah. Um, I think you know you get you, you can get sort of maybe more detail, better dynamics, better sound stage, and you know, all the hi-fi stuff. But I think in terms of value for money, this is probably still one of the hi-fi bargains. Yeah. So it's six hundred and sixty pounds now plus cartridge um, and I can't think of any turntable anywhere near the price that sounds any, anywhere near as good no no um, and uh, especially if you put it on a good sub table a good turntable table yes um, so sticking it on the floor or on some random Ikea coffee table won't be so good no put it on a decent uh, uh, support because they don't have suspension basically no. they have no. three feet and that's it they don't have sprung sub chassis obviously yes um, so they're very very sensitive to the uh, to where they sit and also needs to be very level as well completely level doesn't it it does um, it, it really yeah, yeah absolutely and and finally don't put the lid on when you play it uh, because the okay. lid 
okay. spoils the sound. That's I interesting, think. isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, which my cat will love, no <laughs> doubt. Yeah. Um, but you can put it on later when you finish playing. So yes. No, that's a, that's a really interesting point. Yeah. I think the same is probably true with with quite a few other turntables. I, don't, I never find the lids really add yeah. anything to the yeah. sound quality. I agree. Um, I, I, when I was at that factory visit, um, Roy Gandhi, who was uh, who was you know, the, the, he's the founder of, sure. of Riga Products, yeah. Yeah. Riga Research, yeah. um, told us a great story about they have this sort of they had this uh, Riga hotline. Yeah. Uh, so you could phone up if you had any problems, you know, setting up or if it broke down. I, I, I think it probably one rang about once a year. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, and he said they took a call once and somebody said, look, I've got a complaint. Um, when I tap my Riga, I can hear it through the speakers. And Roy Gandhi said, well, don't tap it then. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just a classic sort yes. of Riga answer. Fair point. Um, but yeah. I think what I'm saying yeah. is here, it does, it does uh, illustrate the fact that you do need to isolate it. Yeah. Um, and a decent turntable table will, will make it sing even more. Definitely. Um, yeah. But what a lovely bit of kit. Yeah. So, well, the, know, the other, the other uh, great mod for the latest one is the Neo 2 power supply. Right. Um, and, this is um, like a lingo for the Riga. Yeah. Yes. Um, so um, the, the the new Riga that we the current Riga that we reviewed has got two sockets for power supplies at the back. It's got a, a standard kind of wall wart type power supply. Yeah. Uh, which we used, and it's also got another socket for a Neo. So you can upgrade the Planar Three uh, with this other power supply, and that that makes uh, quite a quite a difference. Um, I'd like to hear that. Yeah. That'd so be that, very interesting. That's to a hear great that. feature that sadly our our original ones didn't have no did no not at all no, um, no. But the other thing that the uh the new ones have that our originals didn't have is a kind of brace bar there's a kind of brace uh, isn't there a kind yes. of a metal yeah. brace between the yeah. uh tone arm uh base and the uh the bearing, bearing center just to give it a bit more rigidity yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so um and uh you know apart from that it looks incredibly similar yeah. to the original ones it's quite hard to tell the difference yeah um, I think they might have changed the base as well, the, uh, basically the sort of plinth. Or, um, uh, I think it used to be MDF, and now it's still a kind of particle board, but it's, uh, it's got some resin added, I think, for sure. damping. And it's now got gloss paint instead of matte, hasn't and it? And the switch has moved underneath the switch has moved, from, the original, yeah. from the early days. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, what, 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 we're on the, the current incarnation of the tone arm as well. Yeah, so the uh, RB330, um, which is basically a very similar to the RB300, but with a, uh, a different mounting uh, base arrangement. Sure, um, yeah. sure. Um, so. And in fact, we listened to it with some of our, or some of your, uh, Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab yeah. albums. Yeah. Um, it was singing along merrily, wasn't it? It sounded really great. Yeah. Um, Dire Straits, we listened to, Communique album. Yeah. Uh, Breakfast in America, yep. things like that. Plus um, public service broadcasting. Public service broadcasting, absolutely, yeah. yeah. But all sounding really, yeah. really lovely. Um, and it kind of, it's the thing I've always loved about the Riga is it gets you, in, it got us into hi-fi, it gets anyone into hi-fi yeah. really without, you know, blowing the budget. Yeah. And and I like the fact that it works really well with a whole variety of amp and speakers. Yeah. Um, it's a great platform for success. And you can literally then choose your amp, choose your speakers, yeah. and, you know, Bob's your own call. And yeah. I reckon... I reckon if you had a Riga based system for around about fifteen hundred quid, you could probably have a really good, really good hi-fi yeah. system. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, maybe we should think about doing a riff on that at some yeah. point with you know, uh, yeah. sub. What's the best sub fifteen hundred quid vinyl system you could get? Yeah. The Riga was is the no-brainer uh, uh, yeah, choice. Yes, anything it? with so, a Riga three in it, basically. It's probably it. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah, very true. Yeah, but no, I mean, it, it, it's fantastic, and the new one is even better. Um, I think the the one criticism of the ones that we had in the 80s um, were, you know, the speed stability was decent, but it wasn't fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the later ones, they've now got uh, an aluminium pulley, uh, motor pulley, whereas the originals, I think, had um, uh, plastic, was, didn't was, they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they've got a slightly different system for mounting the motor pulley as well. Uh, and a couple of other tweaks and, and the result is that they've got uh, really good speed stability. I think when Paul Miller measured the Riga Planner 2 uh, in Hi-Fi News a couple of years ago it was 0 0.04 which is the same as a Lin LP12 from the 80s yeah, there in we are. terms of speed stability so there we are. Uh, that's uh, and, really good. And, and with, the, with the power supply 
yeah um you know it improves it yeah again, doesn't it yeah that's the whole point of it yeah so but uh, you know great sound it, it, it there's still a reason to buy a, a more expensive turntable um but you need i think personally you need to go to something like a kind of michelle jaradek se to get a really noticeable improvement all round. um and that that's the the uh, I'm sure Riga would say the RP6, wouldn't they, or the Riga, the Planner yes, Six or yeah, whatever, yeah. the Planner Ten. But um, you know, the the, the Planner Three, um, for so many people, will be good enough. I think. Yes. Um, yeah. Unless you get really serious about vinyl, um, you can put a decent cartridge in it and just enjoy it. And it's so simple and easy. It's really interesting you say that as well because when when I was in uh, hi retail hi-fi. It was very hard to sell a Linaxis turntable because everyone wanted to compare it to the Riga 3. Yeah. And they were different, yeah. but, I, but a lot of people genuinely didn't yeah. think the, the Lin was worth the extra money. The, um, the Axis was a, a one third more expensive, yes, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, and not one third better. <laughs> no, and in fact, maybe not better. Yeah. Um, in a lot of people's eyes. Yeah, yeah. You know, but we, I remember doing that yeah. demo an awful lot. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes the, the limb won, sometimes it didn't. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but you know, it was it just, it made the Riga sh seem like incredible value for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, really good and great to see it still going. Yeah. Um, yeah, really, really brilliant. And it's just been an absolute pleasure to revisit. So, thanks for bringing that over. Yeah. Um, that's been absolutely great. Not yeah. having it back. <laughs> No, it's been superb. Thank well, you. Well, we've heard it in our system, in my system, and in your system. Yes. It sounded great in, in both. both. Yeah. Um, it shouldn't work either. No. Because, you know, you think of this sort of hi fi philosophy of, um, you know, the most important part is the turntable and then amp yeah. and then speakers. Yeah. Well, we've both got very revealing amps and speakers. Yes. And so actually, that should show up flaws in the turntable rather than its qualities. But yeah. the Riga sang in both systems, didn't it? It did. Yeah. You know, so it's a real, real, you know, uh, a rubber stamp right yep, there absolutely. On, on, on how how cool this turntable is. So yeah. there we are. Uh, Hi-Fi Riffometer. Ten. Ten. <laughs> that was easy, wasn't it? Is that the first time we've both given tens? Probably. Certainly for, yeah. for, for, a, for a modern yeah. product. I know we have a vintage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. So yeah. Riga, well done again. Uh, we love what you do. And, uh, and thank you very much to everyone for watching this episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. Thanks very much. We'll see you at the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Yeah.